Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Right now, we're seeing one of the biggest crypto bull runs as Bitcoin has exceeded its all-time high just a month before the crypto halving. This means we might see some projects increase in value by 10, 100, or even 1,000 times in the upcoming months. However, investing in crypto isn't always easy. Some projects end up worth nothing, causing investors to lose all their money. Just like any other market, the crypto market has both opportunities and risks, so making a profit depends on finding the right coins to invest in. So, in this video, we're going to give you a brief explanation of the crypto market basics and what you need to think about when you're looking to trade and invest in coins. We'll give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to trade crypto coins and the platforms you can use, plus a few tips that can boost your returns. Finally, will provide a rules-based trading setup to help you find the best positions to enter the market based on technical situations. So guys, if that's something you're interested in, hit the like button to show your support and subscribe to our channel if you're new since we share advanced trading knowledge. See you after the intro and disclaimer. As I mentioned earlier, Bitcoin has surpassed its all-time high just a month before the Bitcoin halving. But what exactly is Bitcoin halving, and why is it important? Every four years, the block reward for Bitcoin miners is halved in an event called Bitcoin halving. This will continue until all 21 million Bitcoins are issued. But will it impact the price of Bitcoin and cause it to rise? Let's answer this question by examining the Bitcoin price during the previous halvings. There have been three Bitcoin halvings in history so far, November 2012, July 2016, and May 2020. If we look at the short-term price chart immediately after the two to three weeks following the Bitcoin halving events, we can see that not much usually happens. Typically, it only brings volatility. But what about a longer-term period, like three to six months after the halving event? In the 2012 halving, we experienced a major rally, and by April, the Bitcoin price had significantly increased, up to 10 times within six months. In the 2016 halving, a very similar pattern emerged. The price began a one-year-long major bull market, driving the Bitcoin price from $600 to $18,000. Then, in 2020, we saw a six-month ranging market for Bitcoin before it started to take off. So, what can we conclude from all this data? Overall, we can conclude that the market direction tends to be bullish, and eventually the cycle does take off. However, the exact timing of when the rally can begin is very hard to predict. We may still witness a sideways market even a couple of months after the halving event. When Bitcoin's price rises, it can create a positive sentiment in the overall cryptocurrency market, leading to increased investor confidence and investment flows into other cryptocurrencies as well. This can result in a general uptrend across many cryptocurrencies. However, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that all other coins will rise simultaneously. Despite this fact, investors often prefer to invest in smaller cap coins instead of Bitcoin for several reasons. These smaller cap coins have the potential for significant price appreciation over a short period, which can lead to substantial returns for investors. This potential for large gains attracts investors seeking high-risk, high-reward opportunities. But what does smaller cap coin mean? This term refers to cryptocurrency coins that have relatively smaller market capitalization compared to the top coins. Crypto market cap refers to the market capitalization, which is the total value of a certain cryptocurrency in circulation. It's calculated by multiplying the total number of coins in circulation by the current market price of each coin. For example, the market cap for Bitcoin was $357 billion as of September 22, 2022. This means that if you multiplied all the bitcoins in circulation by the current price of bitcoin, you would get a total market value of $357 billion. Now, when discussing smaller cap coins, two terms come to mind. Altcoins and meme coins. Altcoin is a general term used to describe any cryptocurrency that serves as an alternative to bitcoin. These coins cover a wide range of projects and can vary greatly in terms of their technology, uses, and market values. Altcoins include cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, and others. They often aim to tackle specific limitations of Bitcoin, 
such as scalability, privacy, or functionality, and may offer unique features or applications. MemeCoin is a type of cryptocurrency that is primarily influenced by internet memes, social media trends, and community involvement, rather than fundamental technological or financial principles. Meme coins often have a lighthearted or satirical nature and may be created as a joke or parody of traditional cryptocurrencies. The value and popularity of meme coins are usually driven by viral internet trends, social media influencers, and online communities rather than underlying technology or utility. Examples of meme coins include Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, Pepe, and other cryptocurrencies inspired by internet memes or cultural references. In summary, while altcoins cover a wide range of alternative cryptocurrencies with diverse features and purposes, meme coins specifically refer to cryptocurrencies characterized by their reliance on memes, internet culture, and community-driven narratives. Trading meme coins carries an exceptionally high level of risk. They tend to either skyrocket by thousands of times or plummet to zero, with very little middle ground. Smaller market cap cryptocurrencies inherently come with high risk, but also offer the potential for higher rewards. Conversely, large cap cryptos are lower risk, but may not yield as significant returns. Mid caps fall somewhere in between. It's important to note that meme coins typically fall at the extreme end of the small market cap spectrum. Their micro market caps pose an extremely high risk, but also offer potentially high rewards. It's prudent to maintain a balanced crypto portfolio comprising large caps, mid caps, and small caps. If you examine the chart of nearly every meme coin, you'll notice a similar pattern. It usually begins with a big jump in value because people are speculating, followed by a crash, a few recovery waves, and then a period of range. This pattern often occurs because many bots invest in meme coins they find on decentralized exchange aggregators like DEX tools, hoping for quick gains, which rarely materialize. Once meme coins flatline, there are two possibilities. Either they fade into obscurity or experience a recovery. However, it usually takes a significant catalyst to awaken a meme coin from its slumber. Unfortunately, for most meme coins, this catalyst never materializes. In theory, it's impossible to predict if and when this revival catalyst will occur. However, in practice, there are several factors to consider that could increase the likelihood of such an event which we will cover in the next videos. Now we come to the question of how to buy and sell crypto coins. Many platforms enable you to do so, but the crucial point here is that before you begin trading on any platform, you must have a well-defined crypto trading and risk management strategy. One of the platforms for trading and investing in cryptocurrencies is Bybit. Bybit is among the highest rated cryptocurrency exchanges globally, and according to CoinGecko, it ranks as the second largest cryptocurrency exchange after Binance. If you don't have a Bybit account yet, you can sign up using the link provided in the description. Once you've created your account, navigate to the market overview on the homepage. Here, you can access the list of cryptocurrencies available on Bybit, along with a wealth of useful information. Here you can also select any category to view related cryptocurrencies. Clicking on the details will open a page where you can find information related to that coin, such as market cap, trading volume, and a brief explanation of the coin itself. If you click on Trade, a page opens that allows you to access the price chart and trading tools to analyze the current technical situation of the market. You can also place buy and sell orders directly from this page and search for any cryptocurrency you want from the top left corner. Now we've reached the part of technical analysis and the trading setup to enter the market. It's important to note that technical analysis remains relevant across different platforms. So if you have a trading strategy that works well for you in Forex, the same strategy will likely work in the crypto market as well. However, we recommend a trading strategy that relies on market direction, higher time frame key levels, and optimal retracement levels to enter the crypto market. In this part of the video, we'll present a step-by-step -step guide to a trading strategy that integrates all of these concepts. But before we continue, if you've enjoyed this video so far, make sure to hit the like button to show your support and comment below to tell us what topics you want us to cover next. The first step of this trading plan is to identify market direction. You can use any time frame to start with, depending on whether you're seeking a short-term or long-term trade. However, we recommend using higher time frames such as 4 hours and 1 hour to determine the current market direction. 
Since lower time frames can contain a lot of noise, it could be frustrating to identify the market sentiment. As we start our analysis on the one-hour chart, our first step is to draw the market structure's schematic to understand the market direction and structure. This schematic is outlined from the lowest point to the highest points of visible swings. For example, here, this could show the swings of market structure for this chart. Additionally, you can draw some internal structures onto the chart as well. However, the main goal of drawing a schematic is to see the recent movements of bulls and bears in the line chart to get a clearer idea of who is in control. So, try to make it as simple as possible. In a bullish market, we simply want the price to respect the demand areas and continue making higher highs and higher lows. If the price breaks and closes below a demand area, it shows that the buyers are losing control. If it continues to make 1, 2, and 3, moves to the downside then, we will potentially witness a new bearish trend. On the other hand, if it breaks the high to the upside, it indicates that the buyers are still in control and we can look for long opportunities. The same concept is applied to the bearish scenario. Now, after identifying the direction, we would zoom out to higher time frames to find higher time frame key levels. The main reason for identifying higher time frame key levels is to see how much space we have before reaching the next important level in front of the price and to determine where to set our long term targets. For this top down analysis, we use three time frames weekly, daily, and four hour. When identifying key levels, we mainly focus on some of the most important criteria. First, more touches are better. More touches indicate that more people are paying attention to that area, and when the price reaches that level, they are more likely to react. Second, long wicks indicate that the price has been immediately rejected, increasing the likelihood of rejection again. Third, a drastic move away with imbalance suggests that many participants and a significant amount of money have taken action in that area. Now, after identifying higher time frame key levels, it's time to search for a trading setup and execute the trade. As mentioned earlier, you can use any trading setup that works for you. However, it's crucial to conduct your own backtesting before placing any trades with real money. Backtesting helps you build the necessary confidence and assess the performance of your trading setup. Unfortunately, backtesting can be time consuming. And that's why we use TradeReg to save time and keep track of all our backtesting. Once you have completed the backtesting, TradeReg will provide a detailed matrix with vital information, including win rate, maximum drawdown, profit gains, and more. If you'd like to try a seven day free trial, check the link in the description. Now, the trading setup we recommend for entering the position is based on simple retracement and Fibonacci levels. Essentially, when trading crypto coins, you want to buy low and sell high. Once we have identified the latest impulsive movement aligned with the direction, we will apply the Fibonacci retracement tool from the start of the move to the end. Anywhere between the 61.8% and 78.6% levels is an excellent area to place a long position in the bullish scenario. The same principle applies to the bearish scenario. Our stop loss will be placed below the swing low to protect our position, and we can target the first level in front of the price. Now, let's apply all of the concepts step by step on the chart. Here, on the Sol 1 hour time frame, we can see that the market has recently shifted to a bullish market by breaking above these supply zones. This is our latest market schematic, and it's clearly making higher highs and higher lows. Now let's zoom out to the higher time frame to see the bigger picture. Here on the daily time frame, we can identify two key levels near the current price. So we draw them in. Now let's zoom into the four hours. In the four hours, first, we adjust the daily levels based on the four hour candles, and then draw four hour levels if visible. We can see that this level has acted as both support and resistance multiple times. So we draw it in. The 4-hour price action shows that the price has recently rejected the daily level, and we still have room before reaching the next key level. So, let's return to the 1-hour chart and execute the trade. On the 1-hour chart, we can see that our latest impulsive move started somewhere around here and extended all the way up to here. We will apply the Fibonacci retracement tool and mark the area between the 61.8% and 78.6% levels. This is our optimal demand zone for trade. You can either set a buy position in the middle of this range, put your stop below the swing low, 
and target the next level in front of the price. Alternatively, you can wait for a pullback and zoom into lower time frames to find more confirmation. This confirmation could be a double bottom inside this range. Now this is a perfect example of a price action trading plan where we have combined the market direction, higher time frame key levels, and retracement levels to enter the market. The crypto market has the potential to yield massive profits, but it also carries significant risks. That's why you need to have a solid risk management plan when placing trades. So guys, that's it for this video. I hope this video provided value to you. If it did, please go ahead and smash the like button to show your support. And if you're new here, consider subscribing to our channel. See you in the next episode.